Hey everybody, it's Lon Seib, and we're gonna talk about something I've been meaning to get to for a while now, which is what a cesspool Facebook has become with fraud and scammers and fake accounts. It is a mess. I'm gonna show you some things that I experienced directly over the last couple of days. Let's get to it. Now, today's video was prompted by an unfortunate incident that happened to a friend of mine locally here. Somebody stole her car right out of the driveway and she put up this post to remind her neighbors to take your keys and lock your cars because what's been happening around here is that in the middle of the night these kids come through they open up unlocked cars take valuables out of those cars and in some cases there are keys in the car and they just drive off with them and go on a joyride and because there's very little consequences for these kids and because there's so many unlocked cars around here they keep coming back it's created a very fertile ground for criminal activity and of course, there are things that can be done to prevent that. And she was trying to help spread the message. Now, when she posted this as a public post, what followed were dozens of scammers trying to take advantage of somebody in a bad situation. So as you can see here, one after the other of these people asking her to go over to Instagram and look for these accounts and send a message and they can help her get her car back. But the reality is these people are actually going to steal her personal information and make a bad situation worse. And as you'll see in a minute, Facebook is a very fertile ground for criminal activity as well. So last night I said, let's try a little experiment here. And on my Facebook page, I put up a post where I said, this is a honeypot post to see what kind of, sca of spam we can attract. And then I said, the other day my friend's Facebook account was hacked. Can anyone help them? And this is a gold mine for these scammers. And sure enough, within an hour, I had over two dozen responses of people asking me to do very similar things. Find this guy on Instagram or message me and I'll help you get your account back. Just so much of it, all from fake accounts. And why is this happening? Well, first of all, there is a lack of support options on Facebook. And I think what's happening here in particular is that people are looking for areas where they can exploit people who are desperate. Your account got taken over, you wanna get it back, what do you do? You'll, you'll take any help from anybody. If your dog got lost or your car got stolen, kind of the same thing, right? It's hard to find somebody to help you out with this. And again, they're taking advantage of people in a really bad place. Additionally, Facebook has zero enforcement of anything. So this has become, just like my area here, fertile ground for criminal activity because they can get away with it and there are no consequences. And if you want to see an example of zero enforcement at work, check out this comment that I got on a post on my Facebook page from a Daniel Sarvella. And this was a very similar post to the one I just showed you. And he wrote in to say that GG recovery on Instagram is legit. His customer relation is top notch. He's gonna get my account back to me, lickety split. This is obviously a scam post. And so I reported it. And guess what? Facebook writes back and says, thanks for your report but we're not taking it down. This was actually after I sent them an appeal to urge them to look at it again, and the account stayed up. And this was weeks ago, and guess what? The fake account is still there. And in all of three minutes, I was able to verify that this is a complete bogus account. How? Well, I took his profile picture there in the circle, and I fed it into Google Images, and it brought me right back to Facebook where this guy's name is actually Tony Ellison, and he got a Community Spirit Award from a ABC Brisbane in Australia. And if you look at his banner photo there, this actually came off the real Tony Ellison's account. He made this public post here with his daughter getting a citizenship award. This seems like a really decent guy here, and criminals are using it, and Facebook knows it. They've got all this information. They can easily see that this guy's account was up first, yet this fraudulent account is up there scamming people with his likeness. And this happens to everyday people like him, but also celebrities. And we'll talk more about some ways you can learn about some of the awful things that are happening with celebrity impersonators as well. And then this morning, I took a look at all the friend requests that I got. And out of the top eight, seven of them are cloned accounts of people that I know and they are tricking friends of mine to friend these accounts. One of them was my wife, who got tricked by a fake account of my uncle, who then started writing to her about some medical thing here, and because the English was bad, she knew it was a false account, 
but she still friended the account initially. And what would happen after this talk about his surgery would be a request for money. And that's how this stuff rolls. By the way, my uncle's fake account, it's still there. Now, Facebook does have a reporting feature that you can use to let them know that there's a fake account, but it's arduous and it requires we, the users, to be the ones to take the action. So what you have to do is click over to the fake profile. You have to look for this button with three periods on it. That's what it looks like. When you click on it, you get the find support or report option here. And then you have to select pretending to be something, even though it's pretending to be somebody, but we'll let that go here. When you click on that, you then tell them that it's a friend, and then you type in the friend's name and hit submit. And of course, this doesn't take the account down automatically. Facebook has to review it. In many cases, they don't take the account down. They think it's valid and legitimate. And what drives me crazy about this is that they put it on us to police their platform. And because this takes so long to do, and because there are so many fake accounts popping up all day long, who has time for this? And so those accounts stay up and they commit fraud against more people. And don't even get me started about all of the fake home improvement scams that pop up on local Facebook groups. For some reason, they almost always involve duct cleaning. And what happens here is that people reach out to these fake accounts, they pay a deposit for the service, and they never show up and do the work and the money's gone. And this happens over and over again. And if you do a search for the text on these posts, you will see these things all over Facebook. And this again is why Facebook is fertile ground for criminal activity, but it gets worse. So let's go back to that real account that was used for the creation of the fake account, Tony Ellison here. This is the photo that he posted publicly on his Facebook page. And in the comments here, He's got a comment from someone named Yilan Zhang saying that I find your post very interesting and I really want to get in touch with you and chat. And this is likely the start of what's called a pig butchering scheme. And what they do is essentially fatten the pig to the point where they can extract a lot of money out of them. So it starts off innocently enough. They target people that are elderly or lonely and make them feel like they've got a long distance relationship. And then they start having them send money via cryptocurrency into these fake investment accounts. You can read more about this over at CNBC, but it's more nefarious than it sounds because in many cases, these scam operations are actually trafficking slave labor into their operations. There was an expose posted on, on the New York Times just this weekend about a Chinese gangs operation to commit these crimes against people in China using WeChat. So it's not just Facebook, it's other social media networks as well. But really any network with a large audience like Facebook or like WeChat is certainly vulnerable for this kind of thing. And the question is, are these networks doing enough to stop this activity? They have all these AI resources. It's very simple to see when an account was created and when the profile photo was uploaded, why they can't do more to prevent these things from happening is beyond me because this is the kind of stuff that happens when you've got a very fertile environment for criminals to do their work. So with the advent of AI making it a lot easier to create fake accounts, how do we go about verifying that people are real? And I can predict that all of you watching are not gonna like what I'm about to talk to you about here, but I think this is where things are going. And we're starting to see this happening now on three major social media platforms with more coming no doubt in the future. Now, a few months ago, Facebook slash Meta rolled out their Meta Verified program where you can get yourself a nice badge here with a check mark so that you can verify who you are with Facebook and Meta. And it requires, and I know this is the part you're not gonna like, you to submit your government issued ID and maybe a selfie video also, depending on what region you're in, so that they can match you up and know that your profile is the real you, which you would hope would make it easier to stop all these people from creating clone accounts. So far, it has not. There are many examples of verified celebrities having their, their accounts cloned and scamming people. So, so far I have not seen this working yet. The worst part about Meta's approach is that they charge you for it, $12 a month here in the US. But if you pay, you can finally get a customer service person to help you if you have a problem. But most people are not going to do that. They're not going to submit their ID. They're not going to pay for it. 
And so I don't think Facebook is going to really be able to solve the problem here with this program. They've really got to do something else, and they are certainly capable of doing it. Part of why I think they haven't taken much of an effort here is that a lot of their uh, success and performance as a company is tied to the daily active user count. That's what their shareholders look to, how many people are on the platform. And so if they start taking out all of these cloned accounts, their user levels are going to drop dramatically, and that has an impact on stock price. So let that sink in for a moment. Now, LinkedIn is also doing something like this. All of these programs, by the way, are optional at the moment. And so they've paired up with Clear, and what you do is submit your information to Clear. They can confirm your identity, and then you get a special badge on your LinkedIn account to let you know that you are who you say you are. Again, this is not required, but a lot of these platforms are starting to give verified accounts a little more of a boost in their algorithms, so there might be some incentive for people to do that because LinkedIn also has a fake account problem. Twitter, of course, has its own problems, and although they created their uh, verified thing where everybody can get a blue check mark, the only identity verification they were going off of was a credit card, and we all saw how bad that went through. So they quietly rolled out an ID verification policy, and again, it will boost you up a little bit in the rankings on the algorithm if you do submit a government ID and verify your identity. So I think this is where a lot of these platforms are going to go to some degree, but it doesn't solve the problem completely because people have to participate in order for it to work. Meanwhile, I think with all of the resources and AI know-how that these companies have, they can solve this problem if they really wanted to. So what can we do to protect ourselves? Well, the best thing we can do is educate ourselves and our loved ones about how to avoid getting scammed. And one great resource here in the US is the AARP. They have a fraud watch network where you can actually call people on the phone and get help before you turn money over to a scammer or worse. So definitely check out that link, lon.tv slash fraud watch will bring you there. They also have a podcast called The Perfect Scam. And this is a weekly podcast. It is exceptionally well done. It is very easy to digest. And what they do is they work through the mechanics of the scam, often with a victim who they're interviewing to describe the whole process and what they were thinking and feeling as the scam continued. It is very, very educational. And I think something that not only you should listen to, but everyone in your life should be listening to as well. It's a great resource. There's also a YouTube channel that I suggest checking out, especially if you want to see how these scams work. And that YouTube channel is called Catfished. This is by a company called socialcatfish.com. And they run a service that tries to help people stay out of romance scams. They let you scan pictures that are being sent to you so you can see if they're legitimate or not. The service they offer is a paid service, but the YouTube channel, of course, is free. And every week, they're interviewing somebody who's leaving their husband, who's getting arrested for uh, laundering money. It's crazy the kinds of things that are going on and how many people fall for this stuff. And in each episode, they detail all of the communications from start to finish so you can see exactly how these things progress. It's another great resource to check out. But unfortunately, Facebook remains a cesspool. They're not alone. There are other problems on other social media networks, but Facebook is the largest, especially when you account for Instagram as well as their regular Facebook platform. And they also have an audience that trends much older than other platforms. And so they have many more vulnerable users that are being exploited here on a daily basis. So hopefully those resources help, but I hope Facebook takes some action here to cut down on all these fake accounts that are now just everywhere turning the place into a real cesspool. That's gonna do it for this one. Until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters, Brian Parker, Budley, Hot Sauce and Video Games, Steve Green, and Amda Brown. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more.
And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv s.